This is the new offering from Shark RF. They're calling it a mic, or as they label on the website, an M1KE. It is a self-inclusive, standalone hotspot with a built-in speaker and microphone. So you don't need a radio for this thing. This is your radio. It's not a radio because it's not transmitting RF, but it is a over-the-internet speaker two-way transceiver type system. It requires Wi-Fi to work as it does not have a SIM card, so you have to connect it to Wi-Fi. But then you can connect directly to just about anything that Shark RF supports with any of their other hotspots, and we're going to take a look at it right now. Okay, once again, they, they're calling this the M1KE or the mic. Uh, when you turn it on, it has the voice announce like uh, many of the previous models of open spots or shark ref devices have so it'll turn that on i'll show you that here in a second and you can connect to it and it's cool because you can go into one of the menus and look at the connection settings and you can find out what ip address it is on on your network and then you can connect to that to that ip you just type that ip into a browser and you get so what we see is just what you would normally see on a regular open spot menu we've got this advanced mode down here at the bottom corner bottom corner of the screen there you guys can't see that but if you go down here at the bottom corner of the screen check this box here for advanced mode it'll come up and give you a lot of other options and then it expands some stuff here uh, if you mouse over the update it'll say when the scheduled update is for it's uh it's got a little pop-up thing here that's not showing up in the screen right now but then you've got all of your id database lookup on the right dmr chat so you can chat back and forth with uh, another person, Poxag, DAPnet, Quick Call, User Manual on the on the left, and Shark RF Link on the left. Shark RF Link is basically a two-way communication that all of the open spots have had, where you can you and another person with an open spot can connect together via over it, and it uses some kind of proprietary protocol that Shark RF uses. It's not DMR or DSTAR or anything else, but it will allow you to connect with someone else with an open spot. And I think you can do form groups on it too. So up here at the top, quick setup here, it'll let you one click connect to all of these different systems. YSF reflector here on the bottom right, TGIF, XLS, REF, QuadNet, NXDN, Other, I don't know what Other is, Alabama DMR, Ozark Digital, and QRM KC3OL. Okay. Not sure what those are. Might do some tinkering with that later. It does have an HB Link connection. Now, with this HB Link connection, you should be able to connect to a Seabridge system that allows HB Link connections. My Seabridge, my Seabridge has had HB Link connections on it for some time. I tried to fool with this yesterday, and I kept getting errors with it. So I might try to do something with that a little bit later, but we'll see. But at least that's part of... You know, at least it's in the menu, so that's a step forward. Free Star, FCS, Free DMR, DMR Plus, DCS, Brandmeister, D Star Gateway, Amcom, not sure what that is, ADN, Null, I guess you can turn it off, Shark RFIP Client, Local Broadcast, and Parrot. So all of these different connectors here, or quick setup menus, I should say. This is, I'm currently connected to the TGIF network on the Stump Knocker talk group. So if you have read any of Angry American, Chris Weatherman's series, the Survivalist series, Going Home series. That is a new network they formed, a new talk group they formed on TGIF, and they do nets every Monday night. I've checked into that a couple times myself. The, in fact, right there, Stump Knocker 29185 is the talk group uh, ID for that. And you can set that, and you can set different things in the microphone here, including the destination ID, which is your talk group settings, network, it will, settings here, it's got 10 profiles, and it's easy to switch profiles back and forth from the screen of the device there. And then network, it's got different profiles here for Wi-Fi as well. It looks like it's got, um, yeah, it's got five different Wi-Fi profiles there, there as well. That's my home profile. And you can see network status right here. And of course, you can see what IP address it is here after you've already connected to it. But it'll show you that on the screen as well. So... What we're going to do is walk through this thing right now. I'm going to see if there's anything monitoring one of the system fusion groups, show you how to set it up, and we'll go from there. If you want to connect to any of these systems and you don't have a license yet, I suggest checking out Ham Radio Prep. 
Ham Radio Prep is the sponsor of today's video. You can always save a 20% discount on everything they offer with the coupon code of Jason20. They have classes for technician, general, and extra, all three Ham Radio license level classes. They have an HF master class. They have a Baofeng basics class. And they have their newest class is an MCOM tools, which has actually been quite popular. It's a $99 course that you can save 20% off with the coupon code of Jason20. And it teaches you just how to prepare for the next emergency communications disaster, be it a natural disaster, hurricane, tornado, whatnot. We've had several of that in the United States over the last few months. So highly recommend Ham Radio Prep. If you go over there, be sure to use the coupon code of Jason20 and tell them Ham Radio 2.0 sent you. All right, this is the screen of the device right here. You see the speaker in the front, obviously screen there. It is USB-C rechargeable, so that's good. On the left here, this is the PTT button with the up, down, and volume. You see the volume indicator on the screen when we touch that down button or the up button right there, just like that. Over here, we've got a menu system here with a scrolling through the menu and exit. This right here is your exit button here on top. To enter the menu, you click that right there. And to exit the menu, you would click that. So we can hit the menu button, scroll down through the menu, Quick, act, uh, quick setup. If the screen is flashing in the camera right now, it's due to the refresh rate on the camera. The screen is actually quite solid. It does not flash like that. All right, so if we go into About right here, and scroll down, gives you the hardware version. You can change the host name if you want to. Firmware version, bootloader ID, all this kind of good stuff. Hit back on that. Settings. Wi-Fi. And then we go to network status. And this is after you've connected. And you'll scroll down here and you'll see your IP address right there. So that's how you get to the that's how you get to the network status if you want to once you connect it. The first thing it asks you when you come up is are you in the USA? And it asks you some of the questions like your call sign, and it'll look up your uh, DMR ID by itself and your NX ID by itself. And then it will populate that stuff. Then it will ask you to put in the, or it will scan the Wi-Fi and it will ask you to put in the password for the Wi-Fi. And you kind of have to scroll up and down with it. It's got a QWERTY keyboard on the screen, but you have to scroll through it. It's not touch screen. So it's kind of a pain to enter it. But once you enter it, it's there. So it's not a big deal after that. And if I want to go here to the, well, first of all, let's go back here. This is the main menu. So if you see right here, it says call log. And it's got an up arrow to the right, and it says uh, set uh, DST with destination, and a, a down arrow to the to the right, up arrow to the left, down arrow to the right. Okay, so if we long press this up arrow, it'll give us the call log. And we can scroll down here. So there's no more call logs in there because I haven't had any, because I shut this thing off overnight and let it charge. And then since then, I haven't heard, heard anyone on the network today. But if there was a, if there was people talking, it'd be in there. And the set destination, we would long press the down button. And we got a different list of options here. The top list is your talk group. So you can change talk groups there really easily. Uh, you can get a list of talk groups by going into list. You can set favorite talk groups. You can do private calls there. And then you can uh, do call messages right there. So all of that's accessible from the set destination menu destination being your talk group or your yezu system fusion room if we short press that button and go to quick setup you can choose connectors right here so this is where you would go to free dmr d star hb link quadnet tgif brandmeister ysf reflector all of the different things right there so that's what that menu is used for but right now i want to go to profiles config profile right here so i could set like i showed you on the screen a minute ago i can set different profiles and i have this profile set that one is the stump knocker net so in other words that one's connected to tgif on the stump knocker talk group uh, profile number two i have for texas patriots which is a yezu system fusion room that i talk on often in texas so i'm going to click that and it's i'm going to go in down here you can rename it here connect to or no it just more of the same thing there. Like I said, there's 10 different profiles. But if we click, if we highlight activate right there, it basically restarts the connector. YSS reflector 60755. Okay, there we go right there. That's the voice and it wasn't turned up very loud. 
And now I'm going to see if there's anybody uh, listening out there. Uh, KC5, HWB, Texas Patriots room, testing a connection. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Usually there's somebody monitoring this system. It's a pretty active system, really. And, of course, there it is. Okay, NR5 US. Okay, NR5 US from KC5 HWB. Thank you for the comeback. Just uh, testing this new device from uh, SharkRF that's the all-in-one hotspot with the built-in transceiver. Yeah, it's a pretty cool little piece of gear, I'll tell you. I've got a couple of members uh, that, that have those, and they just rave about them. Oh. So uh, congratulations for getting it set up. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a neat to carry around and uh, small, compact, works well, and um, going to be enjoying it. So thanks for coming back to me, uh, KC5 HWB. Awesome. So that's it right there. If we want to go in here, and now there's people talking on it that I've started it. <laughs> there's that's that's actually a, pr a pretty active group of guys on that uh, system there. So check that out if you want to. Now. If I want to switch away from this, I can go to quick setup, no, settings, profiles, and I'll go back to stump knocker and activate, and that's in the middle of a QSO. Okay, so it says Mike, it calls itself Mike. So it says Mike connected to MMDVM server, and now if I go to set destination, it's uh, set to talk group 29185 on the TGIF network, and it is ready to go. And if I go to call log, it doesn't show me any more call logs because on this system, it shows Mike, <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he announced himself, the Mike device announced himself, so it shows the announcement, but no other activity because... I haven't had any call logs on this system. So it doesn't save the call logs from whatever, if you choose different, pro, if you switch profiles to different systems, whatnot, it doesn't save the call log and go across profiles. So it'd be nice if it did that, but I mean, you know, it's not a big deal, I don't think. If we want to go and set a new profile up completely, we can go here, settings, configure profiles and I could choose a new pro profile four. I don't have anything in right now. So I can choose that. We can activate it and it's going to come up. All right. So this is the setup screen and this is what I saw when I first booted this device up. Okay. So we go to next. It asked me my region, United States. Next. It asked me my call sign and I have to type in my call sign here. So K and see, you have to scroll through this to get to everything. You can hold hold the hold the button down, and it pages through it by by itself. Go back up here to the top and change the numbers. Okay. Now I go to the bottom right where that little check mark is right there. Hit that. Next DNID not found because I don't have one. Uh, DMR ID. What? Okay. So I don't know why it's not populating that. Did I type my call sign wrong? Oh, I sure did. Wow. Okay. I typed HQB. I didn't even see that. I should put my glasses on before I do this. Okay. All right, so let's correct that. No problem. When you go back into it, it comes up under the highlight under the backspace. So I'm going to backspace through that. And B. Okay, that's correct. Right there. NXD and not found. And it comes up with my DMR ID right there. There we go. So do you have an, am an official amateur radio license? Yes, I do. Go to next, initialization setup complete, finish. And from there, I can go to quick setup and choose which network I want. Brandmeister, DSTAR Gateway, DCS, DMR Plus, etc., etc. All of these different options here. And I can save that. And then once I save the profile, I can go back into settings, configure profiles. I'm on profile right here. If you see this little arrow right there, it shows me on on profile four, so I can go back into profile four and rename it to whatever I want. And I would rename it to something like Texas Patriots, which I know is a YSF, uh, Yezu System Fusion Room. I named my profile one to Stump Knocker, which I know is a TGIF DMR room, uh, talk group and whatnot. So you can you can name it to whatever you want to. So whatever works for you is what um, is what you would name it to. So, But this is a cool device. I really, really enjoy 
how simple it is. I enjoy how let's switch back to Texas Patriots here. I've got another um built into it. And they're still talking. Oh, he's talking about this device. So I'm going to be carrying this thing around with me for, for the next little while. It's, this is a cool device. i got to connect it to the Wi-Fi in my truck. Not a big deal. I'm going out to the hunting lease later this week, connect it to the Starlink, and uh, go from there. So have you heard of this device? What do you think about it? Have you picked one up yet? But this is all inclusive. You could do DMR, D-Star, YSF. Uh, I didn't see a P25 option in there. I'm going to have to go back and check for that. Um, but a lot of different flavors of DMR and uh, a couple different flavors of D-Star. Some other stuff I've never actually heard of. And uh, what do you think? you think this is something you would use? Because I think it's something that I'm going to be using quite a lot myself. So put a comment in the description below. Let me know what you think about this device. I will put a link to SharkRF's website. Actually, they have the open spot 4 and 4 Pro on huge discount right now. They're probably being discontinued in lieu of this thing. So if you've ever wanted an open spot 4, now, now might be the time to get it. Go check that out. I'll put links to all that in the description below. Thanks for watching.